Let's talk about the BRC terms, subcontracting, outsource processing or storage, and traded products. Now, these three terms in the BRC standards can sometimes be confusing. It sometimes requires a fair bit of explanation when we deliver the BRC courses. Uh, and or when we support our clients with consulting services. Now, when BRC talks about subcontracting, let's focus not on services like pest control, calibration and things like that. Let's focus subcontracting on a process where a product is being handled. Okay, so somebody else is going to be doing something with our product, processing it or storing it, for example. Now, subcontracting is an umbrella term. It's a broad term with a broad scope. If you are asking somebody to do something with your product, you're going to have a contract with them. All right. Now, a more specific term, far less broad than subcontracting, but still falling under the term subcontracting, is outsourced processing. All right. For this term to apply, the Product starts with your business, starts with you, goes somewhere else for them to do something with your product, store it or process it, and then it must come back to your site. You can either simply store it when it comes back to you, or you can further process it. Doesn't matter. The term will apply as long as you meet the conditions of it starts physically with you, goes somewhere else comes back to you. Let's not confuse this with other processes like where you might design the recipe or the specification or something like that. Such supporting processes don't feature in the definition for outsourcing. It's about physically handling the product. All right. Now, if you're going to get somebody else to handle your product, yeah, outsourcing, you're going to do that under contract. So you are always going to have the, the term subcontracting applying. So there's a tick. If you also can tick the box outsource processing. Yeah, you can't outsource process without a contract. So those two go together. Let's now look at the term traded products. If it is really trading, if that is true, it means you bought the product, you sold the product. All right. In order to sell it, you have to receive it into your facility. So the only time you actually handle the product is when you receive it, put it into the warehouse, then pick it for an order and dispatch it. That's the only handling that's allowed. As soon as you repack it or relabel it or anything like that, it's no longer called a traded product. And you would have to comply with the rest of the standard. You would have to deal, deal with it like it was one of your products if it wasn't called a traded product. So we've got a multiple scenarios here where you can have combinations of these three terms in real life. You can have something that's subcontracted and it meets the definition of the term outsourced processing. Yeah, you handled it. Yeah, it started with you. When somewhere else came back to you. But clearly, if you handled it like that, you can't call it traded. Remember, with traded products, we don't do any processing at all. Okay, so the next scenario is you'd have something that's subcontracted, but it doesn't meet the definition of outsourced processing. In your process flow, you can't show that it started with you when somewhere else and came back to you. But it's still under contract, so subcontracting applies, outsourced processing doesn't apply. In this scenario, though, it could also be a traded product. You could have a tick against that box. In that scenario, under contract, you ask somebody to make the product for you. In that scenario, that is, they made the whole product for you under contract. In the third scenario here, there might be no contract at all. Therefore, also no outsourced processing. But off the shelf item that somebody else made, you choose to buy it and sell it. That's a traded product. Yeah. So no subcontracting, no outsourced processing but it's traded. So those are some examples of combinations of terms and therefore combinations of clauses that will apply to your business when you get audited by BRC. It's sometimes helpful for you to be able to assist your auditor, assist your certification body in deciding what applies to your business. If you need any further guidance or assistance or clarification, contact STC for training or consultancy services 
and or contact QTC for consultancy support. Take care.